Welcome to Electron Line. Once the concept was being realized that an atom was basically a structure made out of a, a single small nucleus at the center which carried the positive charge and then the small tiny electrons far on the outside circle around the nucleus at very high speeds then we wanted to figure out well what does that actually look like how big is it how big is the orbit how fast electrons move and so forth so what we're going to do here is explore the velocity of the electrons around the nucleus and this is in a hydrogen atom and that's also called the Bohr atom because it's such a simple concept we have a single proton at the nucleus and a single electron in orbit around the nucleus we'll figure out the frequency of the number of times that the electron goes around the nucleus and the period the time that it takes for one orbit around the nucleus now Bohr assumed that the electrons moved around the nucleus like planets around the Sun or moons around the planet and of course we now know that that's not the case but it's still a good model and some of the concepts we're going to talk about on this video here are actually still very relevant and valid so what we're going to do here is assume that there's a force of attraction between the two it's called the Coulomb force and the Coulomb force is what provides a centripetal force causing the electron to move around the nucleus and so we're going to set the equation for the centripetal force equal to the equation for the Coulomb force and from that we're going to figure out the velocity of the electron assuming we know the radius of that orbit now at the time that they were figuring this out they did not know the radius so since we know the radius we're going to take a quick shortcut and later we're going to learn how they figured out the radius of that of the Bohr atom so assuming we know the radius and in this case the radius we use a symbol a sub naught for the Bohr radius which is equal to about 53 picometers which is 53 times 10 to the minus 12 meters now the centripetal force equation is m v squared over r so that's mass times the centripetal acceleration which is v squared over r we set that equal to the coulomb force which is k times q1 q2 divided by the distance between them squared in this case that would be the radius of the orbit of the electron right away we can cancel this r with one of those and now we're going to solve this for the velocity so we get velocity squared is equal to k q1 q2 divided by m times r the mass of the electron times the radius of its orbit and q1 and q2 are the charge of the electron and the proton which are basically equal to one another so we can simply call it the electron charge squared so we can write that v squared is equal to k e squared divided by m times r so to find the velocity we simply have to take the square root of both sides so v is equal to the square root of k e squared divided by the mass times the radius so plugging in the numbers we have v is equal to the square root of k which is 9 times 10 to the 9th times e which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th and of course this is in coulombs k would of course be newtons uh, let's see newtons kilograms squared no that would be newtons meter squared per coulomb squared this is in terms of coulombs we have to square that mass is in kilograms 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 and r the radius we now know is 53 times 10 to the minus 12. all right i'm leaving the units off because that way it looks a lot cleaner and so the velocity is equal to 9 e to the 9th times 1.6 e to the 19 minus squared divide by 9.11 e to the 31 squared oh not squared but to the minus 31 yep I have that and divide by 53 e to the 12 minus and if we take the square root of that we get 2.18 let's see here uh, 2.18 times 10 to the sixth so that's 2.18 times 10 to the sixth meters per second to put some relevance to that that is equal to 2180 kilometers per second imagine that an electron goes around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom at a speed of more than 2000 kilometers per second that is quite some speed compared to the speed of light well it's not quite there yet because you know that c is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second 
So V in terms of C, let's see what that ratio is. If we divide that by 3E38, we get, uh, let's see, 0.728, so that's equal to 0.728% of C. So a little bit less than 1% the speed of light. That is still enormously fast. Now based upon that, can we find the period? the time it takes to go around the nucleus once. And we know that distance is equal to velocity times time, which means that time is equal to distance divided by velocity, and therefore the period for one trip around the nucleus, that's going to be the distance around the nucleus, which is 2 pi r divided by the velocity. Now we found the velocity, we know the radius, so therefore the period, t, is equal to 2 pi, times the radius of 53 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and we divide that by the speed of 2.18 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, and that gives us a period in a fraction of a second. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply 3e38, so we get that number back. We take the inverse of that. We multiply that times 2 times pi, and times 53 e to the 12 minus, and the period is 1.52 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. Wow, 1.52 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds, that's the time it takes an electron to move around the nucleus one time. Since the frequency is equal to 1 over the period, that will then be equal to the inverse of that number, and that will tell us how many times per second the electron goes around the nucleus. So let's take the inverse, and it is about 6,500, roughly speaking. It's about 6,500 trillion. 6,500 trillion times per second. That's the best way to express it, times per second. So how many times? Not trillion. Not a thousand trillion, but 6,500 trillion times per second. That's how many times the electron goes around the nucleus. Imagine when they first calculated these numbers, the speed of the electron, the time that it takes for electron goes around the nucleus once, and how many times per second the nucleus goes around, or an electron goes around the nucleus. It's just an absolute phenomenal amount of times. So these were the beginning of the discoveries of the structure of the atom. Of course, the Bohr atom simply assumed that it was an electron simply going around in a circle orbit, and now, of course, we know that's not the case. Electrons go around the nucleus in various orbital shapes, and we'll talk about those later, but at least we now have an inroad to the understanding of the Bohr atom. And a quick addendum to this video, because maybe to get a better appreciation, we're going to write it out with the number zeros. Trillion is 12 zeros, so the frequency is going to be equal to about 6500, 000, 000, 000, 000, and 000, 000 times per second. The electron goes around the nucleus this many times per second. So if this number didn't impress you, maybe this one will, but it's absolutely phenomenal when you think about how many times the electron goes around the nucleus in one single second. And that's done in every nucleus of every atom in the entire universe. Quite something.